Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's that time of the week where we get to take a look at the coolest new knives that have hit our shelves in the past seven or so days. Let's check them out. All right, before we get into the knives, a quick thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel, both historically and especially recently while I've been, uh, been really pushing and really asking you guys to help us hit that 100,000 uh, subscriber mark. We're getting close. I think we're gonna make it. We're not there yet. Uh, hopefully we'll get there soon. Before Christmas would be awesome. Uh, and then once we hit that, I'll shut up about it again. This is, you know, not something I, I normally harp on uh, on subscribing to the channel. So thanks for uh, for putting up with me while I do, while we're trying to hit this. Um, soon, it'll be over. Um, but anyway, let's get into some knives. And I'm gonna start with some shameless self-promotion, actually. Uh, new versions of my inaugural knife design, the Nordsmith Canteen Knife, are finally here. Uh, this is the knife design I launched my, uh, my Nordsmith brand with several years ago. And due to you know, pr production delays and increased demand this year, I've been out of stock on everything for quite a while. So I haven't been able to bring anything in here to the knife center either. Well, finally have a new batch of canteen knives to be able to share with you. Really excited about this. And there's a couple of firsts uh, with this as well. Uh, I'll get into some of the design bits with uh, about what goes into this knife in a little bit. Uh, but what you get here, it's the first time we've used CPM 154 on these blades. Uh, and it's also got a new sheath design as well. And I'll get into that in just a second too. Find somewhere to put this. As for the knife, uh, I'm real proud that these are made here in the USA. They're made by a small team of craftsmen. Uh, I actually partner with LT Wright Knives to build my, uh, my production models for me. So if you're familiar with his quality, you know you're gonna be getting the exact same, uh, same build specifications or build quality here. As a result, this comes in at 365, but it is a tool that's gonna last you a lifetime. And even if it doesn't, we'll get you taken care of this. We'll be able to, uh, to fix you guys up if something ever were to go, or go wrong with the warranty on these knives. But anyway, what you get here, like I said, CPM 154 steel blade shape. For the long timers on this channel, you know I love Nesmuk blades. And that's what you uh, essentially have here. It's a kind of an upsized Nesmuk. There's a little bit of butcher knife DNA in this blade as well. But I designed this as a, uh, a perfect knife for me that I couldn't find anywhere else in that it was a camp knife that could do all the kitchen knife stuff I wanted to do as well without sacrificing that camp knife side of things. And I think it really does a very good job. I may be a little biased, but um, what you get uh, is the handle. There's enough of a drop here to the edge combined with that continuous belly on the blade that it gives you enough knuckle clearance to do some rock chopping on a cutting board. That's essentially uh, the, what I was looking for that, couldn't that I couldn't find. Eighth inch thick steel, nice high flat grind, so the slicing geometry is excellent. And there's actually a lot of versatility in this blade and the handle had to kind of unlock that for you. Uh, just a straight handle wouldn't have done what I wanted it to do. First off, there is enough drop to do that rock chopping, but it's not so far away. It's gonna be uncomfortable when you're doing wood carving. And you'll notice that the edge kind of curves up and away in the standard grip, great for slicing. I like to say whether you're carving wood or carving turkey, it does a good job. But then when you choke back, there's a bit of a flare here at the pommel that's gonna give you a little bit of retention and it's also gonna bring the tip of the knife down so you can do some light chopping, whether it's bone or branches and that sort of thing. It's gonna square up that edge near the tip. And of course you got a little bit of extra weight thanks to that hump there to give you a little more power as well. Nice set of pinch grips for doing those rock chopping or other small, uh, smaller tasks and different types of grips. Chest lever grip works really well with it. And then you've still got essentially a center line point for doing that drilling and the bushcraft types of things. I'm really happy with the way these knives have come out, uh, especially these latest versions of it. They're just exceptionally nice. Again, I may be a little biased, but I think they're really great. But I'm also really proud of the new sheath design we came up with for this new generation. Now you'll see here, it's a snap design. I'm actually not normally a big fan of snaps on a sheath, but the way, that, way it's done here, I think it works really well. The advantage of course is it holds the sheath or it holds the knife in very nicely, but because of the way it's wrapped around the handle, it does a couple of things. For one, it's easy to pop open and it's naturally gonna move out of the way when you draw or sheath the knife. So it's not something, you know, some straps can be easy to kind of slice accidentally. It's not really gonna happen here. 
And also, the other thing I don't like about snaps in general is they can uh, get caught when you're walking through the woods and maybe pop uh, loose. But again, because this is wrapped around the back side of the handle like that, you're not really in danger of that happening to you. Apart from that, it's got the same things the original JRE Industries sheaths have, still made by JRE Industries now, but you've got the, uh, the fire steel loop there on the side, as well as the dangler, which will let you carry the knife lower if you want, fold it out of the way or unscrew it, and you can use the standard belt loop. All right, since we're talking about uh, some, uh, there's an LT Wright con connection there. We've actually got a brand new big batch of LT Wrights in, uh, but I only pulled one for this particular video. We've got new versions of the Pronghorn in right now. This particular one is especially nice. Uh, 3V steel, desert ironwood handles, orange liners coming in at about 174. Just look how nice that is. Really nice figuring to the uh, the wood here. Really nice pop of color with that orange. And it's still uh, that same great pronghorn design that you like with the, uh, the 3V steel on top of it. Great little whittling knife. Holds in the hand very nicely without being too bulky. Got plenty there to grab onto. Even for my slightly larger than average hands, it's almost an exactly even four finger grip for me. You've got two sets of thumb scallops here at the front and the backs. So you've got plenty of grip options when you're, when you're carving wood doing those small bushcraft tasks and what have you. In addition to that, JRE Industries sheath, simpler pouch style right here, very classic type of shape to it. And apart from this model, we've got a, uh, we've got a couple versions uh, of the pronghorn, including a desert ironwood with black liners with an 01 steel, comes in a bit less. But we've got some new great plainsmen's in, uh, some new holy bushmen's and a few other things as well. And we'll leave, leave links to all of those down below. All right, one more fixed blade before we get into some folders. We've got this little guy. If that pronghorn was just too big for you, we've got the Topps Mini Tanimboka Puko right there. There it is. Comes in right now at a cool 83 bucks, made in the USA as well. This is, of course, the smaller cousin to the, uh, the full-size Tanimboka Puko, uh, but the blade here, 1.63 inches, 1095 carbon steel, nice and thin, Scandi grind again, nice little whittler. It's really about a... For me, about a two finger handle actually. Um, but I could see this being really useful at small carving tasks. Uh, I wouldn't want to be, you know, doing heavy curls or heavy carving with it, but you can really uh, manipulate this small blade because of the size of it. There's a lot of different handholds. I could see myself choking up on it a little bit. So you got just a little bit of the blade tipping out there. Re would be really nice for some of those real fine detail cuts with the tip, especially. You've also got a crisp spine here on the back, so you can use that for scraping, whether it's your fire steel or the, uh, the piece of wood you're working on. And then you've got uh, nice black micarta scales with some uh, subtle red liners there at the back, so you, you got a little pop of color. A couple lanyard tubes, or a couple, couple of flared tubes, so you can do some lashing if you want, that sort of thing. Uh, and somewhat surprisingly, it actually came, comes with a leather sheath and not a, a kydex sheath or neck style of sheath. Instead, you just got that simple, uh, style of sheath right there. But you also do have a small section of paracord included. They, so they do still intend this to be a neck knife. And indeed, traditionally, uh, especially being a Puko uh, of Puko heritage in the Scandinavian countries, neck knives were carried tipped down like that. Uh, so that's nice too. And you got the nice tops survival whistle, of course, as well. All right, now for the main event it's in the thumbnail of this video. I know you guys were excited for this. It's the new Mini Osborne from Benchmade. It's the 945BK1. Of course, this is the smaller brother to the original 940 Osborne, and it comes in with a sub three inch blade for the first time ever. S30V steel, still got that, uh, that classic reverse Tonto shape, and you've got a black coating on this. What is this? It's a DLC. Actually, don't, I don't have the spec right there, but it's a nice smooth black coating. It's not gonna impede your cutting performance at all. S30V steel, I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, and then the handle, it really does uh, overall just look, it, I mean, it instantly obviously looks like a 940, uh, but it translates to the smaller size really nicely. Black G10, blue standoffs, or uh, yeah, blue, blue standoffs and a blue liner on each side of the, uh, on the inside of the handle there for a little, little bit of a pop of color. So it's not just a none more black type of knife. And then of course the axis lock, you got that nice ambidextrous crossbar, gives you the flipping action. It is a smaller knife and it hasn't been broken in just yet. Uh, so it, uh, it's not flipping as smoothly as some out there, uh, but it's 
really nice. I love the access lock, always have. As far as the handle, it's about a three and a half finger grip for my slightly larger than average hands. I'll stop saying that now. You know how big my handle, my hands are at this point in the video. Um, so a decent bit of, of length there. Um, even, uh, even though I technically don't have a four finger grip, I don't feel uh, like I need more to have a secure grip on this knife. Nice pocket clip, uh, reversible for either side, not deep carry if that's what you're looking for. Uh, but I'll kind of paraphrase Seth, our, uh, our Instagram runner, who, uh, who kind of said, I, th I think said it very well. The original Osborne has always been, uh, let me see if I get his quote right, an intoxicating blend of work knife and dress knife. It's a pretty good descriptor, I think, for the series. And now that you can get all those same great qualities with that blade length just under three inches, you can get that in a package that you can take just about anywhere. All right, next up, I promised you guys last week I'd show you this. Uh, it's the exclusive, Knife Center exclusive version of the Riot Jack Chen Tribute Knife. And the uh, exclusive feature on ours are the green fat carbon inlays, which look really cool, I gotta say. Definitely adds something over your standard topographic carbon fiber right there. These come in at 332, uh, so it's a bit of a step up from some of the standard versions. This series starts at 262, uh, but that fat carbon isn't cheap. Uh, whenever you see that on a knife, it's usually a little bit of an upcharge. Two and three quarters of an inch on the blade length, M390 steel, nice horizontal grain, uh, which there's a few things nice about that. For one thing, I always say it's something you usually uh, see more on custom knives rather than production knives. But the other thing, just from a practical standpoint, let me see if I can find my, uh, my rag here. When you go to wipe off the blade, if you get fingerprints or something on it, most of us are gonna take it and run the, the uh, cloth that way. And when you do that, since the grain's going that way, there's no chance really you're gonna see any, uh, any smudges or anything left. Sometimes you'll see that on a, uh, let's say, a uh, more conventional satin grind like this. If you were to run your rag down the blade, you might see some, uh, some streaking but you're not really gonna see that with uh, this type of grain. So that's pretty cool. As for the rest of the knife here, you've got zirconium bolsters, not titanium, which that's pretty cool. A nice sturdy liner lock, plenty thick, uh, not a wilting flower whatsoever. And a very easy to use front flipper mechanism with this ramp here, kind of on top of the pivot, which is really nice. I'm able to use it very easily. And as you folks know, I'm not always the best at a front flipper, but I've got no problem with this bad boy. All right, we'll keep the train going with some more stylish folders. And one thing I'm really happy to announce is that here at the Knife Center, we're now carrying giant mouse knives for the first time. Really happy to, uh, to have them under our umbrella. Now, if you're not familiar with giant mouse knives, it's actually a collaboration brand between uh, Danish knife makers, makers Jesper Vaknes and Jens Anso. They've kind of put their minds together on the designs uh, for this particular brand. And as you'll see, their DNA is all over these knives. And I'll show you a few from their lineup here real quick. Uh, we've got the Ace Clyde folding knife. There's a few versions of these. Uh, this particular uh, satin, or sorry, uh, brass bladed one is right now on sale for a little bit over 130 bucks. But there's also a version with a canvas micarta and an LMAX blade for about 123 on sale at the moment. Uh, whereas this guy has an M390 blade rather than the LMAX. What I like about this design is it actually kind of reminds me a bit of a, uh, of a true Quaken in a way. Nice upswept blade here. Uh, you could kind of see this as a traditional Tonto shape rather than uh, the more common uh, Western style Tonto we're used to seeing these days. But really nice little upswept blade right at that three inch mark. Nice crown spine for comfort as well. And the stonewash brass handles, they look cool. And of course, they're gonna kind of take the oils of your hand and develop a patina over time, which means your knife is gonna have its own personality too, which is pretty cool. Liner lock to keep things shut. Now they've kept this decidedly, uh, you know, strictly right hand biased, single thumb stud there. Uh, part of that is so that the blade can nestle right into that handle very deeply, but they also have just a simple right side uh, wire pocket clip as well. And perhaps a bit of an interesting twist, no ball bearings in the pivot here. This is actually a, a brass washer pivot, uh, which is very smooth, but it's not quite as free floating, of course, as bearings would be, but it's also gonna be less susceptible to uh, dirt and grit as well. All right, next up, we've got the Ace Biblio. It's a nice little, little design, and in a way, I kind of think of this as a bit of a more premium interpretation, or actually, like, let me, let me rephrase. Uh, think of something like the CRKT Pilar, which is a uh, Jesper Vaknes design. 
this could kind of be seen as an upgrade option for that knife. If you're looking to, to graduate from that into something else, I think this would be a, a really nice option or just a great EDC all around. Blade length, a bit over uh, 2.8 something, uh, two and seven eighths thereabouts on the blade length, M390 steel, nice broad shape with that almost full flat grind. It means this is gonna have some really nice slicing characteristics overall. But you still have the tip, it's down enough, even though I, I would never call this a modified Warncliffe, uh, it's definitely a drop point. The way the tip comes down, you could almost get as much use out of that tip as you would in some kind of uh, similar Warncliffe shapes that would be in this kind of category. Now there's a few different handle options. Uh, there's some titanium. Uh, I've got the uh, one of the Micarta options here, which I really like. You can see we've got open back construction and a nice filling grip in the hand. Not a super slim knife, which means you're going to be able to to put this to work with some pretty uh, with a pretty good amount of confidence. Now I've got a three and a half finger grip myself. Uh, you do have the finger choil there, which uh, should give you a little bit more handle length but it's not the largest finger choil. So if you have larger fingers like me, you might find yourself uh, pinching on the back edge of the blade. So take that under consideration when you're thinking about this knife. Now you do have some crowning there on that, uh, on that choil. So if your fingers are sized right for that, even with my bigger fingers, I can still get my fingertip up there and use it that way. But the backside is, is, jimped, or is uh, crowned as well with a little bit of jimping for your index finger to reach out, which again is gonna come in handy when you're doing those quote unquote, Warncliffe style of cuts when you're dragging the tip. Liner lock on this guy, deep carry, or sorry, not a deep carry pocket clip, but a, a nice subtle wire clip and ball bearings in the pivot on this one. So you're gonna be able to flip quite nicely. All right, next up, we've got the Sonoma, two versions of this right now. There's a uh, black stone washed version, as well as the standard stone washed titanium here. Uh, these are on sale right now for 212 with an M390 blade about 3.4 inches here. Really nice executive knife going on with this particular design. Uh, like I said, M390 steel. The blade shape is pretty agile looking. You've got a, a lot of length without too much width, so you'll be able to kind of take it around curves very nicely. Again, crown spine, a little bit of jimping for your index finger, and a similarly sized uh, finger choil to that Biblio design. They're uh, pretty much identical, actually. There might be a sliver less on this Sonoma. But you do have more handle length in general to work with. I'm able to get all four of my fingers on there. Got a really cool looking pocket clip going on here. It's milled, uh, but it's not, just, uh, it's not just any old milled pocket clip. You've got some cool windows cut out of it and actually two points of contact with the clip and the frame there as well, which is pretty neat. Frame lock going on and definitely ball bearings in the pivot here. So you're gonna have good flipping action, but let's just take a minute and appreciate how that looks folded up maintains that nice slim profile, gonna be a very easy knife to carry every day. Whether you're wearing blue jeans or a nice pair of slacks, it's gonna work quite well, and it's gonna flip quite well also. All right, speaking of nice flippers, we're gonna transition to some more tactical stuff now uh, with some new versions of the Hinderer XM18, now available right now in this current batch with S45 VN steel, which is pretty cool, and these come in about 425 right now. Now, S45 VN has been, uh, well, I guess it was released from Crucible just about a year ago. So we're start starting to see it in some production stuff now, thankfully. And to talk about the uh, relationship between S30V and S35 VN, uh, S35 VN was seen um, as an alternate to S30 that was tougher, but maybe not quite uh, as much edge retention. What they tried to do with S45 is make S30V tougher without losing the edge retention. So we'll have to see uh, if they've succeeded in that when, if we, once we see some uh, kind of side-by-side -side testing maybe out there. But I've been carrying a knife with this steel for a little while and I've been very happy with it. Blade length on the XM18, three and a half inches per usual. And there's a few different versions. Obviously they always produce uh, a number of different color variants. This particular one has brown G10 on the front and the battle bronze titanium frame lock on the back, which I think looks exceptional. Flipping action, of course, you've got the tri-way pivot here on this hinderer, which means it comes equipped with bearings. So you've got that excellent flipping action, but you've also got Teflon uh, and brass washers in the package, so you can swap those out for, uh, for more grit uh, resistance if you're gonna be using this in a more tactical environment, which of course is uh, kind of the heritage of the hinderers. They've always been hard use tactical knives. Oh, getting back to the blade for a second, the uh, 
it's the Sponto shape for this particular run with the heavy working finish. Just all in all, a nice bruiser of a knife in stock now while we're filming this and hopefully uh, they'll be in stock when this video posts. But if not, if you click that link, there's nothing there. I do apologize, but we will be getting more at some point. That's for sure. All right, this next knife is actually a restock of the Spyderco Yo Jumbo, but this has been flying in and out the door so quick. Uh, given the, uh, the situation with the pandemic this year, there are certain days where I'm not here in the office. Every time these have come in, by the time I'm back in the office, they've been gone again. So I've actually not gotten my hands on one of these um, here in the building yet. Uh, but here it is, comes in at 165 or uh, 164.50 to be exact. And Yo Jumbo, it's the Jumbo version of the Yo Jimbo. J designed by Michael Janich as a personal defense knife. You've got a four inch blade with this nice, uh, very straight Warncliffe profile, nice deep hollow grind, which ensures you've got some pretty good uh, slicing capability there behind the edge and a very, very acute tip that's gonna pierce very, very ferociously. You've got S30V steel for the handles and G10, or sorry, S30V steel for the blade and G10 for the handles. And Michael Janich is an expert at close quarters combat and he designed this, this handle to really point the blade or point the tip of the blade right where it needs to go, both in forward and reverse grips, I believe. Don't take my word for it. I'm not a trained uh, martial artist or anything like that, but I'm gonna trust a guy like Michael Janich for sure. Four position pocket clip on this bad boy, just a simple uh, folded pocket clip. And it's, I, I like that it's the steel finish rather than a painted finish, so you're not gonna have to worry about paint chipping off over time. And of course, you've got that compression lock there at the back, which means it's easy to close while keeping your fingers out of the way of that edge, which is a safety measure I always appreciate in my folders. And then very easy to open, of course, with that, uh, that ambidextrous opening hole. And then once this is broken in, you'll be able to kind of flick it open and close very easily also. And this knife is made in the USA as well, which is really cool because a lot of times some of these niche knives like these, companies will send them overseas to their, uh, their production facilities over there, but not this one. This next knife does come from Spyderco's overseas facility. Uh, they're excellent Taiwanese facilities. This is the new version of the Sage One with a Maximet steel blade coming in at about 206 right now. Now the Sage series, uh, they all have numbers and they've, they were kind of all envisioned to showcase different technologies in terms of locks that have shown up over the years. And the Sage Ones have always had the liner lock. So you see that here as well. But apart from that, it's still a design that encapsulates all of the, uh, the Spyderco greatest hits, as I like to call them. Uh, for one thing, you've got the subtle wire pocket clip, which they definitely pioneered, even though they're not the only company that does it anymore. It is reversible for either side. You've got that excellent leaf shaped blade with the full flat grind. So you've always got excellent cutting geometry from a Spyderco. You've got the one hand opening hole and you've got that, uh, that finger choil there, which they kind of ran with as one of their signature elements as well. And that enables you to have more handle length uh, when the knife is opened without as much bulk that you would normally get with that amount of handle length when the knife is folded. But apart from the design, which is admittedly excellent, You've also got that great Maximet steel here paired with the gray G10. And with that steel, especially on a knife that even just the building blocks of it already has excellent geometry, with the edge retention and the performance you're gonna get from Maximet, you're gonna be able to really feel it because the rest of the knife is not holding the steel back whatsoever. All right, next we're gonna go with something a little bit different, uh, which can be a very good thing. Um, in this case, I think it is. Sometimes it's a bad thing, but not here. Uh, this is the Finch Knife Company Runtley coming in at 144 for this version, uh, but 139 for some of the others. Uh, and there are a few different colors and they give each of their colors uh, kind of a f fun name. Like they don't just call this red. This is the Runtley Redhead, but there is also the, uh, the Ghost Green, the Yellow Belly, and the Black Shiner options as well. Um, so that's kind of fun. Uh, but what these are, um, just small little flippers basically, with that very uh, kind of chunky, aggressive, what do, you, what do you call that, a Warncliffe? Actually, what it reminds me of more than anything else is the old school coping blade uh, that I had on my, uh, my Camillus whittling knife uh, back in my Boy Scout days, just kind of supersized a little bit. Because uh, you have that completely straight edge and that uh, sharp, abrupt drop right there. Definitely a great utility knife for sure. 154 cm steel, uh, sub three, sub two and a half inches, about two and three eighths 
Uh, so that's going to be very easy to take all over the place. Liner lock on this guy. Ball bearings in the pivot so you can flip it. As you can see, you've got a nice subtle flipper tab here. And what's cool about it is it forms a nice shape with the blade when it's closed. If you follow that line from the flipper tab, it almost looks like you can dry, draw a, uh, what's that, a trapezoid, or parallelogram, something like that. It looks like a, a solid shape between there and the edge of the blade, which is kind of a neat effect. But it is gonna flip quite well, but you could also open it two-handed, of course, because there's plenty to grab onto, and they even give you a, a dual set of nail nicks uh, on each side of the blade to, again, kind of mimic that old school look. Maybe that's part of why uh, I'm reminded of that myself. But the handles are decently comfortable. There is a little bit of a contour to them, and you got that nice shield inlay there on the front side and a milled pocket clip on the back. It's a three finger grip for me. Still decent, decent sized grip on it. Um, I wouldn't feel too uncomfortable putting this onto some larger cuts, especially with a blade like that that's really gonna dig into what you need to cut. All right, now I've actually got a slip joint, although you wouldn't know it just from looking at it. Uh, this is the new Civivi Trailblazer. These come in, uh, well, they start at 75 for versions like this, but there's an upgraded version uh, with a Damascus blade and a carbon fiber handle uh, that come in about 89. Uh, but for, as for this version, you've got G10 on both sides. We've got orange, blue, and black right now and stainless steel uh, frame with bolsters, uh, technically integral, bol integral bolsters right there. Kind of furthering the, uh, the non-slip joint look for this slip joint is a deep carry pocket clip and the hidden lanyard attachment point there at the back. And as for action, there's a nice half stop on this and some really good walk and talk overall. Now, you might think this would be a one hand openable blade because of this cutout here. Um, but I actually found it very difficult to open this one handed, so I don't think that's what they intended. Um, with a name like Trailblazer, of course, uh, it calls to mind that you might want to take this knife into the great outdoors. So they've given it a fairly robust back spring. It's not a, uh, it's not a weakling at all. So it really is going to benefit from that two handed opening. Um, I did get it open with, uh, with one thumb once, but I felt really sketchy doing it. It, was, it took a lot of effort. And man, if you're, if you're out there in the woods and you're a little cold or even not paying attention a little bit, it'd be very easy to, uh, to slice yourself. So two-handed operation on this knife only, please. But I like the blade shape, sub three inches, just under, and you've got 14C 28N Sandvik steel here, which is one of my favorites. Part of the reason I like it so much is one, it's generally pretty affordable, uh, but it's also very tough for a stainless, which again, for an outdoorsy knife is definitely, definitely appreciated especially on a Civivi where they tend to keep the edges very thin. That toughness and the edge stability that uh, 14C28N will give you is definitely appreciated. And they're also nice and easy to maintain and they're gonna hold their edge very nicely. As for use, like I said, you've got a nice robust back spring there. So you've got a fair amount of passive security there. About a three and a half finger grip for me and I like that you've got that, uh, that index finger protection in the form of that integrated finger guard there as well. It's gonna keep you away from that edge, which again, nice and thin. It's got that high hollow grind for really efficient cutting. All right, next I've got a couple of fixed blades and the first is a neck knife from Nemesis. This is the Arch Ally, which is on sale right now for about a hundred bucks. These are made in the USA, come with S30V steel, uh, about two and five eighths of an inch long with this drop point shape and a flat grind for a good cross section of robustness without uh, giving up too much slicing capability for it. I get about three fingers on this handle myself and kind of the key feature for me on this are these essentially really huge, uh, huge jimps, big jimping there uh, beneath the thumb. Uh, I think this would definitely come in, uh, come into its own more if you're wearing work gloves. There's a lot there um, to kind of grab the leather or fabric of the glove you're wearing. But even so, it's not necessarily all that uncomfortable uh, in the hand. I was a little worried that it might be. And it's certainly not as, as comfy as a smooth spine, smooth spine would be, but it's not digging in the way I thought it might. It's definitely going to be very, uh, very effective at uh, keeping your thumb from sliding around. In addition to that, if you're the kind of person who likes to take a neck knife outdoors, this uh, section here at the front, uh, that, that big jimp, if you will, uh, is going to be very nice for scraping a fire steel. It's got a crisp enough edge to do it, and that half circle, circular nature is going to do a nice job of hugging uh, the ferro rod as you go to scrape it and get your fire started. 
but there's some other nice touches overall. The fit and finish between the, uh, the, the handle and the tang is perfect. Just nice and seamless, excellent satin finish there. And on the front edge of the uh, guard here, they've actually chamfered each corner off so you don't have a sharp bit there to dig in. It's just really nicely done, I must say. Now as for sheath, this is set up uh, for neck carry in the Kydex sheath here. Uh, if you would like to do some belt carry with this, you could use a small tech lock with the, uh, the two rivets down here at the bottom. So you've got some, uh, some belt carry options, both vertical and horizontal with that as well. I've got another fixed blade, a more combat oriented one, uh, back to Giant Mouse again. This is the Rene, comes in uh, on sale right now for 156. And first off, I was, uh, I like the shape of it. It's definitely different from some of the, uh, the wasp waisted daggers you see out there in that you, uh, that it flares out towards the tip. Whereas a lot of like the Fairbairn and Sykes style of uh, knives taper towards the tip. So it's got a different look right off the bat, which is nice. But the, uh, the thing I noticed immediately when picking it up was the weight and that it's very lightweight. Uh, let's see, what does this come in at? Uh, 4.8 ounces for this fixed blade. Really nice. The balance is good. It comes in uh, essentially right at the cross guard. So it's going to be a very nimble knife to use. And the handle is a fiberglass reinforced nylon. It's not G10 or anything like that. Um, so it is injection molded, but it's, it's very accommodating and it definitely uh, pays dividends in the balance. Like I mentioned, when you're right there behind the guard, very nimble, you're not fighting the weight distribution of the blade whatsoever. It is double edged five and a half inches N 690 CO stainless steel, full plane edge on one side and a combo edge on the other with dual flat grinds and that stonewashed finish that I love so much. Now, as for the sheath, it is Kydex also, uh, and it actually comes with um, some dot straps, which are designed to work with, uh, with Molly gear. Uh, interestingly enough, this sheath is not going to work uh, with either size tech lock, unfortunately. So you're, you're restricted to kind of what they give you there, or you can make your own out of uh, cordage or something like that. I've seen that done before and it works pretty well. Now, as for the story uh, of this knife a little bit, um, I was unfamiliar with it, um, but let me read what we've got on our website here. Uh, this was designed for the Conventious Rene. I don't know how to pronounce it, obviously, um, but it's the Brotherhood of Danish Frogmen. And so in Vakne is of course our, our Danes. Um, so it's a essentially a real highly, uh, highly trained special forces unit from Denmark. Um, and since their founding, what is it? 62 years ago, there've only been a little more than 300 ever successfully complete the program. Uh, so it's designed for them and the sale of every one of these actually helps fund that unit as well, which is pretty interesting. If that doesn't matter to you, it's just a really cool dagger. There you go. All right, next up, um, it is give, gift giving season after all, uh, which means we've got a couple of new lines from Miyabi, which of course is uh, one of the, uh, the Japanese arms of Henkel's. Um, they've got two new lines for us right now. Uh, let me start with a more affordable one. It's the Miyabi Ko series, K-O-H, uh, and they've got everything from paring knives to slicers, chef knives, nakiris, bread knives, the whole nine yards. This one right here, is the uh, the nine and a half inch, I believe. Let's see, yes, the nine and a half inch chef's knife. Really nice, comes in at 160. Uh, the paring knife comes in at 90. So that's kind of the range you get with this particular model or with this particular line. So what I like about this particular chef knife is, again, this is kind of like that dagger. It's not that heavy. This is a 7.04 ounce knife and the balance is excellent. It's maybe, well, let's see, let's pinch it maybe just a tiny skosh handle heavy, but when you're pinching right there, it feels just about perfectly balanced in the hand. Not too thick, being a, a Japanese knife, this is made in Seki City, Japan. The blade is nice and thin and they sharpen it to a nice acute angle, so it's gonna feel sharper than a lot of the, uh, the German style knives will. And despite the length here, it is just ready to move with you, not against you. Now the handle here, octagonal, made out of packa wood. You've got a nice mosaic pin there. You can see that on both sides, kind of classes up the joint a little bit. And the blade steel, even though it, uh, it looks like it, uh, it might be a, a Sanmei construction uh, or a laminated construction, but that's uh, an effect. This is uh, a single piece of, they call it FC61 stainless steel. Uh, essentially what that is, that's Henkel's term for Sandvik's 13C26 stainless steel. 
which is very similar to that uh, 14C28 uh, we saw earlier and has a lot of the same characteristics that make it uh, really good in the kitchen as well. Especially with a nice acute edge angle like this, you've got high edge stability, easy sharpenability, fine edge can be got achieved very nicely, and you've got a high degree of toughness in the kitchen when you might be uh, not necessarily, you know, some people just don't treat their kitchen knives as well as some other things. So the little extra durability is definitely appreciated. Now, if you like a look, the look of this, but you actually, you would like uh, an actual laminated, laminated blade, um, I'll do you one further. We'll do you a laminated Damascus blade with the other new line we've got right now, which is the Miyabi Kaizen 2 Damascus series. And this series especially, like, this is true of both of them, but I think this one especially, is really going to make a name for itself for its affordability for what you get. This is the uh, the five and a half inch prep knife right here, just 130 bucks. It's not a a big box store special by any means, but for what you're getting, very very nice indeed. Again, with this knife, you're going to get a pack of wood handle, uh, but it's not octagonal. This is actually one of the asymmetrically shaped handles, so it is a, a unfortunately for the lefties out there a right hand biased uh, prep knife. Feels very nicely comfortable in my hands, I gotta say. Like that Co knife, it pinches very nicely right ahead of that integral bolster right there, and is another very nimble feeling prep knife here. But again, if you don't like this, there are, uh, actually I think a lot of the, the knife patterns mirror what's available in that other series, but there might be a few few different ones in there. We'll leave, link, leave links to the entire series below on both. Um, but as for the steel itself, it is a Damascus steel, uh, or it's, it's actually a, a triple laminated blade with Damascus cladding on either sides of an FC61 13C26 core. Uh, and both of these series, they harden that core, uh, harden that steel to about 61 Rockwell, which is fairly hard, which means you're going to get really, really excellent slicing uh, performance and really good edge retention at the sacrifice and maybe a little bit of the toughness that you would see with this steel. But if you're looking to upgrade your kitchen this year, uh, whether upgrade your own or uh, your significant others or a friend of yours, uh, someone who could really appreciate something like this, this is definitely a very nice series to check out. All right, folks, that's all I've got time to show you today. Make sure to let us know down in the comments what were your favorites of what I showed you. And again, thanks to everyone who has subscribed. And if you haven't already, I'm going to plead just a couple of more times. If you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, we would really appreciate it. Meantime, if you want to get your hands on any of these blades, we will leave links in the description to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because if you're going to spend your cool money, your cool money, if you're going to spend your money on one of these cool knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.